guys have had several days to reflect on all the adventures, all the events that have happened. This reflection has allowed you to grow, allowed you to evolve. You found new resolve, new abilities, new strength, new friends. Let's begin. Red. You awaken. Mowgli is staring at you. He's inches from your face. What is Jam? <laughs> it's a food. It's a very princessy food. Oh. That's why Rapunzel likes it. Okay. In the distance, you hear the music. Can you hear it? Close your eyes and stretch your ears. Uh, I do hear something. We have to go. Why? I, I glance over and just look at what's going on. That's a circus that captured me. We have to go. We have to go. I burst out the door and I'm pulling red. Boots, wake up. Follow them. We should follow them. I don't know why they left in such a hurry, but we need to stay together. I suppose. Quickly. Fine. This makes no sense at all. Thank you, Rapunzel. And I gather my skirts and my things, and I walk out of the room following Boots to track their path. I grab my long toothed dagger and my other dagger as well and follow her out. Mowgli and Red, you will arrive to see many drunk circus goers. You see games, hawkers, sideshows. It is chaos. You remember this world well. But I don't know your history with circuses, so this is where you spent time? I was kept in a cage. They pulled me out of the jungle away from my home. That's horrible. I don't know where I am anymore. You see a juggler walking by? That one there, throwing all the things in the air. Yeah, the juggler? He's a real baboon. Like a real baboon. Like a big snarly, like a real big baboon. That can like, that falls out of trees. Mowgli, these smells, these sights, these things were your prison. This place is dangerous. If they see you, if they recognize you, they will put you back in the cage like the rest. What do you want to do? I need to hide. Would, do you like to use my cloak? Yeah. Yes, please. I, I don't know what they did to you. I never really thought about it before, but this was not right. Here. You give it to him or do you share it with him? I share. Actually, I share. I cover us both. You look like a couple out in the night and nobody looks at you twice and you melt back into the crowd. Rapunzel, as Aladdin drags you through the streets, you now start to smell sweets and spices. There's a man juggling three, four, five things in the air all at the same time. You also start to hear music. Music from all kinds of what must be very, very strange instruments. What, what, what is that sound? This is a celebration. The sound is celebration. I did not know celebration had a sound. Music. And, and, and they make the, the, those round things. Is it, are they fruits? He's making them fly. Uh, I guess I, that's called juggling. Juggling? That's juggling. That's juggling! <laughs> <laughs> Do you see Red or, or Mowgli anywhere? She's looking up. <laughs> There's all kinds of barkers, buskers, gamesmen. You were part of this type of world at one time, which reminds you, once long ago, you were quite good at picking pockets. Yes, I, I noticed that this is definitely, while a very, very, very fun and beautiful celebration, it's also a very lucrative situation. I turn to Rapunzel and, and tell her, Rapunzel, I'm going to do something that you may not approve of, but it's necessary to our situation. I am quite skilled in um, 
shall we say, navigating another's pockets. Go, go, go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He's watching something interesting. A yeah, juggler the, the, with a monkey wait, on his what, back. What? What is that? <gasps> it's the, the, the thing. It's making music. I, I disappear. It's, a, it's squeezing the... What is that? You give me a perception roll. See if there's any suitable targets for your endeavor. Eleven. There is a suitable target. A man who is well clothed, he has excellent shoes, which is a huge telling mark, and his pockets are extra wide. Is this the one you wish to go after? I, I walk up to him and loudly enough that he can hear it, compliment his shoes. And as he glances down towards his shoes. Oh, thank you. I have a great... Yes, yes. yes shoes, uh, cobbler. Yeah, uh, I could give you his name. Yes, uh, where did you get them? I, I admire the... These embroidery. clothes, where, where are you from? Oh. Kalimshan. Are you from Kalimshan? Uh, no, I know I'm not. Um, I, 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 do, you, do you have something on your shoe? It, it, it seems like on that. And while he does that, I quickly try to grab into those wide pockets. <laughs> do it. 19 plus 6, 25. He continues to talk for another 30 seconds, not realizing that you're gone. Well, well gone with a very taut purse in your hand. Mowgli, red. A new sound rises above the night's general din. Circus fanfare. Mowgli, your body tenses. And I'm feeling very protective of Mowgli now, because I, I can feel his, his fear. And this is against Maliki. This is against all things natural that they've done this to him. Absolutely, absolutely. The first part of the show requires all of the slavers to be away from the cages for a little while. We have to let them go. All of our friends, we have to let them go. Okay, um, let me think this through. I'm gonna race out from the cloak and I'm just gonna like tug up where I know that there's like some loose bits of the tent and just kind of like dig under. Just give me a basic stealth roll to make sure that nobody sees this. Uh, that's gonna be 22. You wanna go through first or you want her to go? I'll lift it up for you. So, you want me to go through? <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So I, I stealthily crawl under. No problem. And I'm gonna place it back and it'll look as if like nothing happened. You both go underneath and no one sees. Rapunzel? This, this cloud. Yes, no. no. It is delicious. Yes. No, Rapunzel, it is. It's sweet, and try, oh, try sure. it. It's un unbelievable. It's better than jam. Aladdin, you were quite successful. You even bought some chili corn cobs on a stick for yourself and Rapunzel. Have you tried the, the corn cob? Corn cob. Corn cob? Yes. Uh, it's a chili corn cob. Um, and we dip it in the cloud. Uh, Let's do, what if we add the jam? You said everything, yeah. Jam and chili corn cob. Okay, we'll, we'll taste oh, yourself. Oh, this is delicious. Yes, yes. It is delicious, but give me, just in case, give me a Constitution save against chili corn cob. Hat! Ah, uh, yes. You're laughing at her, but do you want to give her something to drink? <laughs> let, me, let me buy you some, uh, perhaps uh, some, some honey mead. <laughs> Perfect. You give her a big thing of honey mead. Yes. It is very yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, quick, quick, quick. You'll recover, you'll recover. <gasps> Boom. <laughs> Grandma's never cooked with chili. <laughs> yeah, there. Much better, I see. The honey mead is delicious, and it now makes a nice, warm, fuzzy glow around your head and in your chest. Oh, honey This mead. is, um... <laughs> this is good. Honey mead. This is good. Have you tried this? Uh, this is yes. good. Fortunately, I have, yes. She a little tipsy. Why is the room spinning? Oh, oh no. The music is... <gasps> yes, yes, everything sounds better with honeymead. Wow. We should find Mowgli. We should. Are you going to be of any use finding our friends? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be good. Are you sure? Would you like to sit down while I look for them? I'm gonna be good. Mowgli, red, you're crawling underneath the tent. This is where they kept me. 
Okay. They put me in cages and they threw things and they made uh, noises like sick dogs. And, and so many people, me included, came here and didn't know that you were hurting that way. We can tear these apart. We can tear the cages apart. We can free all of them. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. Well, we'll free them. And then we'll attack. We'll attack the predators too, so that they can't do this anymore. We'll stop them. Thank you. Thank you. Mowgli, something falls on the edge of the tent. You hear a girl laughing. Yes. Yeah, I think Boots, they, they're there. We should I, go there. Okay, I just, no understanding you there's, at this point. There's a door. What? There's okay. no door. I want to scurry back to the spot and lift up and just poke just my head out to look up. Mowgli! I put the tent back down. <laughs> Where'd he go? Uh, don't leave me alone with her. Wait, what did he leave? Where's he leave? Oh, it's okay, leave? he'll be back, he'll be back. Mowgli, Red, please come back. Um, we, we should go find them. Uh, I scurry back. I hold open the tent. Hi! I put it back down. I... <laughs> <laughs> now listen, it's chili and honey meadow, okay? Can you keep her quiet? Oh, uh, they, they're going to be quiet now. We should let them in so they can... Honey meadow. I must have had some honey meat too. I said honey meadow. I meant honey meat. Honey meat. Uh, <laughs> well, it had it to you. No, no, you no, had no some more. to it. For yeah. either one of us. It's no more honey meat. Okay, and we <laughs> let you in. Uh, quick, here. quick. Okay. Oh, oh, here. We, we rush inside. You settle down behind the cages. Give me a stealth check. Um, whoever has the highest stealth? 16. A man with an exotic outfit and a cruel look, carrying a large whip, the trainer, walks past the cage you are hiding behind. He leads a very long chain, and then he exits the tent, but the chain extends far behind him and up Mowgli. You know what's at the end of this chain. Doom, doom, doom. You see a great beast, the size of a small house. Its nose has a massive, thick trunk between two huge white bone tusks that curl up majestically towards the sky. It slows as it passes. It's relatively tiny eyes squinting at you, Mowgli. It trumpets. Whoa! Mowgli, you understand Pambata's tongue. Mowgli, doom. Happy you are free. Happy you are free. And it leaves the tent very slowly. Boom, boom, boom. We have to free them now. And I rush up to the nearest cage and I just start shaking it, trying to just move the bars any way I can. Mowgli, we have, we have to think this through or you're gonna get caught and then we'll take you again. You Mowgli. see him trying to open the gate with brute force. This is iron. It's not Mowgli, good Mowgli, you're not gonna be able to open it. I, I, I think I can help. Can you open these locks? Yes, I'm quite adept. I, I doubt there's a lock or a pocket in this room that I cannot navigate my way through. We will and that let would the be free. extraordinarily true. But you've been a prince for well over five years. You haven't had lock picks in your possession for a very long time. Mowgli, we have to figure out how to open it. How, how did they open it when you were in there? We, we need keys. Yes, 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 the keys. Yes. Who would have them? Yes, Mowgli, keys. Uh, is, is there a, a, a person who comes? Do you remember who used to bring the keys? There's a, a, a big man. He speaks. He's saying, it's... it's, oh, it's, no. it's oh. Is that is that him speaking, the, the loud voice? Yeah. That, yes. That's the man. Okay. He's got the keys. I, I, I look around using using all my senses to try to find this and locate this voice and, and... You begin to follow the voice? Yes. Yes, I do. I follow the voice. You have no problem with that. It's a powerful voice and right. you start to do that. Uh, Mowgli, give me a perception check. 15. Would you catch a familiar scent? You smell Ucho. I run over to the cage. You run through the cages and make your way through. The rest of you that are in this room, there's at least 10 different cages holding different animals. There's something small in the distance that is moving in a weird way. It flops 
then it flops. I would like to go take a look at it. There is something to your right. It's a cage, but it's covered by a drape. The drape is tight around it. Uh, you hear a, I know things. Come. al Adin. You keep your wits about you as you move into this unknown area, an even bigger tent. You enter this big tent and you follow the booming voice. This large man turns around. My lords and ladies, children of all ages, we welcome you to the magical world of Carnum's menagerie, circestral and talent extravaganza. And without further ado, your host and ringmaster for the evening, Phineas T. Carnum. And there's a boom, an explosion right next to him. Like red smoke and sparks all over the place. The music starts again and a man appears in that flash. And then he takes a bow, not losing his top hat as he does it. And then he continues to talk to the crowd. While that's happening, a very large man turns and starts heading towards the backstage area, towards where you are. There's people waiting for him, and as he moves towards the back, it's getting bigger and bigger as it gets closer, and the relative size becomes apparent to you. It's a, a hippo man, wearing what appears to be a military uniform adorned with medals. They keep calling him Lieutenant Commander Gefalion. Lieutenant Commander, Gefalion, sir. Yep, of course. And he gets bigger and bigger. What do you want to do? Uh, what I really want to do, I want to, I want to really think about my entire life choices up until this point, but I, I've taken his size and try to look at my surroundings and I'm thinking, is there a way I can possibly get to his back? But the part of his back that, that ring of keys. You do see what you're looking for, and you see something with tusks. It's Pambata. Is there any way I can follow behind the massive bulk of Pambata up until the point that he passes this large hippo man? You and certainly can. Now, Pambata is gonna go towards center stage. Do you want to stay with Pambata as? Yes, I want to hide right under, regrettably, his butt. You know what? Give me an intelligence check. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a bright idea to begin with. I don't deserve the uh, three. You get close to Pambata's butt. You see Pambata go like this because you touched his butt. And he's aware of his space. So Pambata's tail goes. Oh. oh. This. 20 is cleansing meditation. <laughs> oh no! Pambata's tail goes up. <laughs> I will give you a save. It's a deck save, but it's a big butt. Okay. So you need a 12 or better. Oh, um, 22. Ah, you jump to the side and Pambata walks away. Boom, boom. There goes your ride but it leaves a pile. I will try to duck behind this pile of leftovers and <laughs> use, I will attempt to cast Mage Hand to retrieve that oh. ring of keys. I like Probably it. should have started with this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We will return very shortly. Mowgli, you run to Bucho. Bucho? is a Chandafin Mastiff. It is huge, and that is why it is here. That is why it is behind a cage. It hops around as soon as it catches your scent, the tail starts to wag and it starts to jump up and down. Mowgli, Mowgli. Bye. Mowgli, <laughs> bye. Time, time for show, time for show. Oh. No, time no, no, show. I'm getting you out. Out, out, okay. out, 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 <laughs> yes. out. Yes, yes, yes. Red, you enter the covered cage, there's a little covered hallway that goes in, and then there's drapes. Something slides through the darkness, and it does not walk, it slithers. So it's like a snake person? We are called Yuan-Ti. I am Sly. 
Sylvia. I see the future. You see the future? I see yours. I want to know my future. Do you? You are searching for some, not something, someone. I'm looking for my parents. Where can I find them? That is unseen clouds in my vision. Far this place. They are in a place that is no longer a place. What do you mean? What's a place that's no longer a place? I cannot see that. Not a normal thing. Is this a place I can get to? What place cannot be gotten to? Is there something more? You carry a curse. Oh, it will cause you pain. Yes. And she slides back into the shadows. You are going towards the interesting thing in the distance. What are you? You are strange. It looks around. Hmm. You see its tongue <laughs> slap its eyeball and slide back into its mouth. We gotta get these out! <laughs> 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 I'm glad you're you drunk. <laughs> Aladdin. I want to try to maneuver my invisible mage hand in such a way that it quickly can retrieve this ring of keys. Just give me a basic stealth throw to make sure that nobody sees this. Oh! Wow. What does Fade have to say about that? Brainstorm. <laughs> you have an excellent idea. My invisible hand will just flip up the clasp of the ring of keys and swipe the keys. I will give you advantage on your sleight of hand. Yes. 22. <laughs> the keys lift up off of the hook of the unfastened belt and begin to float across the floor by themselves because there's no hand to be seen. <sighs> well done. No one saw you come and no one sees you go with the keys. As always. You've returned to the menagerie tent. You see them spread about. Everyone, I have the keys. <sighs> we can open the gate. Yes, oh, we can. Let's do it. And I'm going to to open this gate. There are two cages near the entrance. There's a cage over there, and then there's cages far away from the entrance. I will defer red. Which cage first? Which are your friends that are the safest to let out? This is my best friend. So, so this cage, and I point to that one. Here, here. Okay, I maneuver over to the cage, and with the keys, do as one does with a key and a lock. Very well. Uh, it takes you a moment to figure out which key it is, right. but. It, it's not rocket science, it's just a matter of time. From the big tent, you hear a beautiful male voice chime out. Ah, you hear it in the distance. Opera, they call it. Okay, and while everyone, the audience is distracted and listening to the opera, it's a good time for us to run around as quickly as possible and start opening all these cages. You start opening cages. The first animal bounces around. It is Bucho. Oh, we do show? Show now. We go to the show? And he starts going towards the big tent. No, Pucha. Oh. Come here. Oh. We're going to leave the circus. Show elsewhere. Show elsewhere. Show elsewhere. Each animal is instinctively primed to head towards the tent. As soon as it gets out, it starts moving towards the, the big tent. Is there any opening? out of the tent that doesn't lead directly to the stage floor. Oh yeah, because this is a menagerie. It has a side entrance that you enter through, and there's usually a ticket taker that allows people in. I'd like to send Boots. Boots, I go outside and make sure no one comes, or let me know if they are. Looking. And give me three sleight of hands. This is you manipulating the locks. Ooh. 
First is eight. Takes a while. Mmm. Second is 24. You open one immediately. And the other is 18. The camels take a while. You, this is the first animal you're like, oh, camels, great. I recognize these things and they're nasty creatures. They spit at you anyway and then they go walking out. The camels start to go towards. My friends, the, the we, go this way. The show is this way. <laughs> And it just turns and goes the other way. It does not speak the language of predators, but you got the gist. Give me an animal, animal handling just in case, or an intimidation, either one. 18. It turns and goes. You know how to make yourself look like a predator enough, and it's like, oh, hell no. And it just changes direction and goes out the way you've made for it. Uh, you release the two-headed goat named Baba. You release a kangaroo named Tyson. And in the distance outside, you're starting to hear reactions because people outside are starting to see animals. Everybody give me 20 seconds. 14. Eight. 18. 19. You see a man in a very exotic outfit. The trainer enters the tent. Oh, the animal's out! And he starts roaring to somebody behind him. Have we opened all the cages at this there, point? There, you are still working on about. There's about four cages left. Um, you have just gone into kind of a, a dark area. It's a, kind of a covered cage. Uh, but the guy with the exotic outfit and the whip, he's glancing at you guys. Oprah, Oprah, get in here! Then something big fills the hallway of the tents that connect one tent to the other. You thought that the hippo man was big. The trainer looks back. You see them? Oprah, do your thing! And it comes through and it is wearing beautiful Viking armor with beautiful Viking helmet, fur and bison horns and a little skirt as well. And it stands, boom, shield, spear, and you see spearmen come in behind it. And they are also similarly beautifully outfitted. The ogre looks at the trainer, looks at you. <laughs> and the trainer's like, what are you doing? I'm doing my thing, like he said. <laughs> Not that thing, the other thing. What other thing? The killing thing. Oh. Then he stomps his spear. He puts it under his arm. I must kill you. I must kill you. And he starts to march forward. I must kill you, 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 and you. And he spins the spear over his head. And he brings it down hard. May I have your initiative rolls, please? 15. Six. Eight. Twelve. Rapunzel, you are first to move. I would like to cast a, a hex on him, and I begin to weave it. This is the hair near my waist, and I, as I weave it, darkness comes out, and I pluck a single strand, and I put it in his direction, and it wraps around his throat. Now that I have cast that, that was my bonus action. And then I get out of the way. I will go and try and find cover and hide. Red. Yes. You see this thing marching towards the lot of you, and especially towards him. So since it's a bonus action, the first thing I want to do is uh, Slayer's Prey on him. You know so what you're looking my, at. Yeah, so he's my target. Is there a way I can check in uh, to see what his intentions are? and if he's out to kill us for, for certain. Give me an inside roll. It's odd. He is marching towards you and he is very much all about the performance. And these guys, as they march towards you, they're kind of going. They're doing that as they march. And this guy is like, ah, he's just singing and enjoying the performance and the event. He is coming to kill you, 
the sharp end of the spear is pointed at you guys, so that must be a thing, but the performance is... So I'm going to turn to all my friends and encourage them to be part of this plan to start applauding and, uh, you know, acknowledging their amazing performance and see if that maybe throws them enough into falling fully into performance and less into killing. Give me a performance or a deception. Okay. Okay, nine. The first of his army notices his head snaps to you when you start clapping for him. He's yeah. like, and he starts dancing harder and he stays in step with his people. Uh, and the other ones are, they, they see his energy change and they're like, and they start moving together, moving together, moving together. And they seem like they're working harder for that guy, Al Adin. Yes. As soon as you run inside, this place is dark and there's a big uh, lock there to open. Do you want to get into that lock immediately? Yes. Uh, give me your thieves tool roll uh, at the bottom of your D&D Beyond skill sheet. 21. You have no problem. You find the only key that you haven't used, you still have about four more, but it's, the choices are getting less and less. You measure the size, yeah, that's the one. Click, pop, and it opens. And as soon as it clicks and pops, some scaly hands wrap around the bars. Ah. Thank you. If you wish, I will open the rest for you. You have done me a favor, and I will free you and free them as well. A snake woman slides out of the open cage. You can trust me in this. They took my teeth so that I could not defend myself. And she opens her mouth up a little bit, and you see holes right here in the gums. I will be happy to repay them if you would allow me. Do you give her the keys to go on to the last three? Yes, I do. It is done. Be well, and I pray that you see your Yasmin again. She waits for you in the faraway place. She pulls back and slides out of this place. Wait, wait! <sighs> how, how did she know? Mowgli, what do you want to do? It was Red's plan, so I'm actually going to drop down and sit and smile and look up and wave like I've seen the audience wave to encourage an encore performance. It's his attack. And he starts swinging the spear all over the place and he watches you. And he snaps his head back at you and he goes, ah! and he takes his stance and the three behind him go, five, six, seven, and they, and they start moving this little square step. In the meantime, Rapunzel. Yes. You see uh, somebody coming from behind though. Uh, it's another person running in from the primary circus area. It's a woman, she has a very impressive red outfit on and she runs in all of a sudden and she has a torch in her hand and uh, she's just starting to get to the edge of this area, but she runs towards you guys as well. Uh, I will hold person on her. Okay. Uh, my braid twists and whirls and shoots out toward her, uh, and strands of hair wind around her wrists and her ankles, binding her in place. She needs to make a wisdom save, save 12. Thank you. The strands slide and sneak through the hay, and she sees the hay starting to move and she starts dancing away from them. And she goes, Phew! and she blows a burst of flame. Whoa! Fire slams into the hay and the wall that is behind it. Whoa! And it explodes immediately in flames. Those flames lick up and out in every direction. There was chaos before. This is now a nightmare. The menagerie is on fire. I want to I want to dash toward the toward that exit and uh, scream out to all I'm going to scream out to all of you to fire like come outside. The ogre throws his spear well over your head. Whoa! And it goes right through the wall. He scoops you up and breaks through the side of the tent and takes you outside. And he puts you down. And then he looks at the fire. Uh, and then he goes running back towards the big tent on the other side. 
You, on the other hand, you got bumped by this. When he went this way, he slammed some of the stuff to the side. Now, give me a dex check to not get hurt by it. If you can roll with the punches, uh, I'll give you acrobatics because you're quick and he's big. And you can see it coming. Oh! 20. Give me a card. Power serve. Nice. You do get bumped, but you use it to your advantage. You take the hit, Ugh. you throw yourself onto a box, you bounce off the box, and you land on the other side with a little help from your friend. <laughs> she stops you as she coils underneath herself. It is done. I am free. She pushes the keys back into your chest, and she backs away. And she starts moving. Wait, 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 wait you, you mentioned Jasmine. She pauses for just a half a second. Y Yasmin, my, my, my princess Yasmin, please, if you, if you know more, you must tell me. How did I get here? Life choices. What, what do you mean? You are a hero. Get back the way heroes get back. I, I... And she slides away. Everybody, give me your constitution saves if you're inside this I've tent. got a 17. Very good. I've got 20. A dirty 20. 13. You have a choice. If you wish to stay, it will get very hot, or you could back away right now, and you can get away from the heat and the smoke. I, I'm already on the run. I, I I hate fire. I would also run. Very good. I'll be right back. I, I want to get out of here, but I it's, it's been my responsibility to, to unlock all these cages. Are they... She, she handed me the keys back. Give me a perception check. She did. 23. Through this smoke, you look at all the empty cages and you are pleased with your work and you're happy that she did her part as well. She opened at least three cages. You're good. <laughs> you hear a honk and then you look back and you see another covered cage. This one is much smaller than the other one. You didn't notice it till now. You thought it was a box or a, a carton of some type but it appears to be a covered cage and that honk came from that covered cage. Uh, I, I can't imagine what it is. If it's, I, I have to get closer to see what this is. And it, this, this. You choose to stay though. You take four points of damage, but your throat gets a little dry. It's very irritated. You start to cough. <coughs> the heat is over there, but it is getting intense quickly, but you can move forward. You start to move forward and you will check in a moment. What do you want to do on the outside? Outside. I stand up, I straighten my dress, which is singed and has hay all over it, and I pull my hair back to wind it back, and it, it is, is also singed, and I realize that there is something that is stuck in it, and it's moving, and I part it, and I realize that that green, moving, quivering, dancing thing was trapped in my hair. It is, indeed. You apparently have and brought it with you. I put it on my shoulder, and I say, I suppose you are coming with us. Now we must find the others because we have places to go and people to find and things to do. You get closer to the cage and you have a look. You want to part <laughs> the drapery on it. Yes, I do. You pull it apart and it is a small version of that thing with the tusks and it's dancing back and forth and it's making this <laughs> It's making a slight hacking sound too because of the smoke, but it's freaked out. Somewhere out there, you hear the matching. What do you want to do? I scramble to get the keys, the remaining keys that I haven't used, and... and, and... Give me that 20-sided, just to unlock this thing with no problem. Ooh. 17. As you slide this key in, you notice these bars have runes all over them. You have no idea why there are runes on this one and none, none of the others. That's not true. The snake woman, that had some runes too, now that you think about it. And now that you're looking at it, you recognize them. But it has runes on it. You put it in and the runes go and they light up a little bit. And you can't even turn the key. It feels like it's rusted. This is some kind of arcane type lock. You have also gotten through arcane locks because you are well skilled in these things. 
Do you wish to try to further get past this? Yes, absolutely. Very well. I will need, because of the fire, another constitution saving throw, please. Three. The smoke is thick. It burns your lungs. It is now all around you. The fire has <coughs> caught. But you fight on. Give me a thieves' tools check. <gasps> 20. Let's see what fate has to say about that. Battlefield scrounger. I'm going to look into these rooms. And you do, and you realign them properly. And with each realignment, you turn the key a bit more. And you do, and it clicks. Ha! Open. Yes. I try to step in and, and grab this furry, beautiful little elephant and... Go. It backs into the cage and it trumpets. And it's not afraid of you, but it's afraid of everything that's going on. And it gets smaller into the cage and pushes back. And you are out of time. This is now an inferno and you are the last person in this area. I can't get the words that this snake woman said to me that the way to return to my beautiful Yasmin was to be a hero. If I leave now, that is not the way of here. I make a decision to, to save this elephant and I, I, I get deeper into the cage and, and, and coughing. <coughs> Smoke. I, 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 I grab the elephant and and and, and try to wrap uh, the, the the attaching garments of my of my leather jerkin around around the elephant to uh, to to protect it from the smoke. It. <coughs> I remember. I have my ring. I have my ring. You three are outside. You hear trumpeting. Far on the other side of this place, you know it is Pambata. Then you see something come out of the flames. It moves quickly and it is on fire. It's about this tall and it is covered in fur. And on its back is a burning leather jerkin. That is the only thing that comes out of that tent. Is Aladdin in the jerkin? That's. No. I run up to the armor and I howl out for the prince. I try and send a message to him. There is no reply. Small prince, where are you? 